Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome, my name's Natalie and I do videos on handbag reviews, unboxings, a bit of luxury eye candy, so if you're into any of those, please consider subscribing, I'd love to have you back. So in today's video, I'll be going through my entire luxury handbag collection. I by no means have a huge collection, I just have 10 items, and for me, I think I've reached purse piece in that I think I have more than enough handbags, I have one for every occasion, and that was something that I was really struggling with and trying to develop in my collection. So I've been collecting handbags since I was in my second year at uni. So it's been quite a while and I think for me it's such an achievement. I know some people might think it's quite materialistic, it's something that you purchase, it's a luxury item, but for me that's what makes me happy and that's I guess my advice. There's others out there who prefer to buy luxury cars or they prefer luxury watches or they like going traveling, they like the experience or dining out. My advice is handbags and luxury items. So that's what I devote my hard earned money to. So just a short disclaimer, that's just what I like to do with my own money. And it's money that I've worked for. Nothing's been given to me. Everything here has been purchased with my own money and I've worked really hard for it. And it's just something that makes me happy. So you'll be able to tell from today's video that I'm a huge fan of Louis Vuitton and Louis Vuitton was my first luxury love so I dived into buying Louis Vuitton in my second year uni and it was the very first luxury item I've ever purchased and I think because Louis Vuitton is the more affordable high-end luxury I guess compared to Chanel and Hermes Louis Vuitton is much more entry-level friendly so a lot of people end up starting there especially because they've got the canvas piece, it's really hard wearing, it's easy to look after and it's much more affordable. So that's where I started and it's true, once you buy one Louis Vuitton item, you literally get bitten by the Louis Vuitton bug and you're just hooked and addicted and you just got to go back for more. And that was the case for me. So in my second year uni, I've been working for pretty much the entire time that you're legally allowed to work. So I didn't grow up in a wealthy family or with everything given to me. I grew up in a family where I was taught how to save money and how to use it wisely. And of course, as a kid, when you get your first job and your first paycheck, you of course want to spend it on whatever you can and just use it up because it's the first time you've had money. And my family's never been the type to give me pocket money or anything. So that was the first time I actually had my own hard earned money. And so of course I decided to spend it and over the years I've learnt what it means to have money and how hard I have to work to get that money. So I've kind of learnt how to save it and to spend on what matters to me. And so at first I was really into makeup. I'd spend a lot of my money on makeup and I'd also go out with friends and would go out to clubs and bars. And over the years as I've kind of dipped my toes into Louis Vuitton and luxury items, that's where my true love is and I'm glad that I did and I don't regret dipping my toes into that field. So without further rambling and everything, let's just get into the first handbag that I ever purchased. And the very first item or bag that I purchased from Louis Vuitton is the Eva Clutch. So unfortunately this Eva Clutch is no longer sold so it was discontinued a couple years back and it's so unfortunate because this is such an amazing piece. So it's a crossbody bag. So it comes with a longer strap that I've got in there. And it also comes with this gold chain detailing. So you can use it over the shoulder just as a handbag like that. Or you can also take one side of the chain, unhook it and hook it to the other side. And use it like a wristlet. So it's very much like the mini pochette but a lot larger. It's great for just like running errands or if you're going out to like a concert or anything. So this was a bag that I would use all the time when I went clubbing. And I remember the first time I took it out clubbing. Because you're on the dance floor, the chain's hanging down here. You've got the straps connected to it. And as you're dancing, the chain does scratch up the plaque really easily. So this is just like a shiny gold plaque there. And the chain would just often scratch against it. and by the end of the night or the next morning when I looked at my bag it had all these scratches on it. It was only hairline scratches but still I was like mortified because this is my very first 
Louis Vuitton piece and very first luxury item. I was so disappointed and devastated when I saw it. So I kind of buffed it. It's You can still see a few hairline scratches, but it's not too bad. And since then I did put like a little plastic protective sticker on it. So you know the screen protectors you have on your phone? I would measure it out and I'd cut out the square for it. So even taking into account the little buckles here. So I'd go around that. So I'd have that plastic protective sticker on it and then to protect it. And that kind of worked for a few years. Over time it got, it looks kind of tacky. So I just kind of like ripped it off. It up really well. The canvas is perfect. Nothing wrong with that. The only wear is probably on the D ring. So it used to be a lot shinier. It's kind of worn off to like a silver color now. But that's really good given how much I used it, how much I've abused it, and also how old it is. So that's that and this strap. So if there's any specific bags you want a closer look at or a review on, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll be happy to do one. I just don't want this video to go super long so that's why I'll just quickly run through all the bags that I have now and I'll do a separate video unless I've already done one and I'll link that video in the description box below too. So yeah, that's my very first item from Louis Vuitton, my very first bag I should say, and shortly after, it was probably maybe not even a month after, I purchased my second Louis Vuitton bag which is the Louis Vuitton Neverfull. Sorry I should have mentioned, I should have mentioned this is in the Damier Abin print of course, so the brown checkered print and it's got the red textile lining inside. Anyway, back to my second bag. So this is the Louis Vuitton Neverfull in the MM size in the Damier Bean print too. So since I was new to Louis Vuitton, I had read a lot of reviews on the Vachetta leather and how it ages and how it how it's easily stained and how you have to look after it and be careful with it. So because these were my first pieces and there was such a huge amount of money to spend on a handbag, I'd never spent anything like that before, especially while I was still at uni. Like the most expensive handbag I had was maybe like a $60, $70 handbag. So to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on a handbag, I wanted to make sure I could use it forever and take care of it. So that's why I went for the Damier Bean print. And personally, I do really like the Damier Bean prints in bags. And I just like monogram canvas in smaller leather goods. But yeah, so I have this and this was a workhorse for me back in uni. This was my uni bag. I could fit my 13 inch MacBook Pro in there. I could fit my water bottle, my lunch, my textbooks, my pencil case, everything in here would fit. And it still held up really well. Granted, I haven't used it that much in the recent years just because I haven't been reaching for larger totes. But given how much I used it, I was at uni four or five days a week. I would always use this handbag and it's held up super super well like there's a little bit of wrinkling there but it's still in amazing condition it also comes with the little pouch but yeah this is held up super well so if you were to purchase your very first Louis Vuitton piece and you weren't sure what it would be I think this is an amazing bag no matter what age you are this is a great bag for uni students for if you're working full time or if you're a mum, this is a good baby bag. So this is the Louis Vuitton Neverfull in the MM size. So before I purchased the Neverfull, I was tossing up between getting this or the Speedy 30 because both of them were classified as classic Louis Vuitton pieces. And I knew I wanted to have both in my collection, but I didn't know which one I wanted to add first. And so I did a lot of research on the purse forum I'll leave a link to the purse forum down below and it's just a really amazing online platform and it really helped me when I was doing some research. So yeah, I was doing a lot of research on it and at the end of the day, I decided to go for the Neverfull just because it's a lot more versatile and I'll get more, I'll get into all that in, in a separate video because I'm thinking of doing a comparison video between the Speedy 30 and the Neverfull. So yeah, and I'm so glad that I did because I use this so much for uni and with the Speedy 30, I don't think I would be able to put my laptop or just wouldn't be as convenient to be carrying around uni all the time. So yeah, that's my second purchase from Louis Vuitton. So after purchasing the Neverfall, 
I kept thinking about the Speedy 30, of course, because I was addicted to Louis Vuitton. And so it was probably maybe two, not even three months after I purchased the Neverfull, I purchased my Speedy 30 in the Damio Bean Print 2. So as you can see, I was definitely a LV junkie. That year was really bad for my bank account because I was such an LV junkie and I just couldn't get Louis Vuitton out of my mind. And so I had to purchase the Speedy 30 and add it to my collection. So I think the Bandolier version came out around the same time I'd purchased this or maybe like a year or two beforehand, but I wanted to just stick with the classic Speedy just cause it is more classic and timeless, but practicality wise, the Bandolier version is probably a much better option just because it's it gets quite tiring carrying a bag like this. As elegant and as pretty as it looks, it does get quite tiring. So I don't reach for this bag as often as I used to. I was contemplating selling it at one stage, but I'm glad I held onto it just because of the price increase of Louis Vuitton items. And also this is such a classic piece and it will never go out of style. So I hope to just keep this in my collection forever. I can use this bag when I'm older or hand it down to my kids eventually. So yeah, this is the Louis Vuitton Speedy 30. And my very last Louis Vuitton handbag is a very recent purchase of mine. So if you haven't seen my unboxing of this and review, I'll leave it up here for you to check out. But it is the Louis Vuitton Palm Springs mini backpack. So I've just got this gold chain detail there. I've added that myself. This chain is from Organize My Bag. So I'll leave the details to the website down below, but it's just a cute little backpack. The straps I've just kept inside. I'm sure you all know what the Palm Strings Mini backpack is. And as I said, I've already done an in-depth review and mod shots of this bag. So I'll leave that up there and in the description box. So this is my fourth Louis Vuitton bag. Now let's get into my Chanel handbag. So the first Chanel bag that I purchased was back in 2016 and that was the medium large classic flap in the black caviar with gold hardware. So this was my dream bag. So this is the only bag that I've purchased that I've actually physically and mentally felt sick just because of how much it was. Comparing it to all my Louis Vuitton purchases this was such a huge jump for me. So I've been leaving it, not trying to think about it for so long, just because of how hefty the price was. I think I just decided because they had just gone through a price increase and I decided I may as well just bite the bullet and purchase it because I eventually do want it in my collection. It is my dream bag. And I decided just to put my name down when I was at the boutique. And so I did, and about maybe three weeks later, the essay contacted me and said they had one in stock and I was I was literally in shock. I purchased it that day. No regrets at all to this day just because of how enormous the price jump has been for this medium large classic flap and also how hard it is to get your hands on these days. So I absolutely love this bag. I only use it for special occasions. It's not really a bag that I would wear every day just because I've had it's not delicate at all, but it's just really what I consider a really fancy bag and it's my holy grail bag. So this will never ever leave my collection and it's just in perfect condition still for given how lo long I've had it, four years. Granted, I don't use it as much as well, but it's still held up super, super well. The caviar leather is still super puffy and shiny. And yeah, I absolutely love this bag. So my next Chanel bag is a fairly recent purchase. I purchased it at the end of last year and I've done a review of this bag. So I'll leave that in the description box below. So the bag is my unicorn bag. So this is the Chanel Square Mini in the light pink caviar leather with silver hardware. So this is my unicorn bag. I absolutely love pink. It's also known as like the Sakura pink. So it's like the cherry blossom Sakura pink and I absolutely love Japan. I love cherry blossoms. So this is me in a bag and it's a mini bag and I love mini bags and it's actually surprising how much a mini can hold. So just comparing it to the medium large classic, you can see the size difference like that, but this actually holds just as much as this. So if you saw my previous video on this bag, 
you'll know that I purchased it pre-loved and it's actually a bag from 2014 so it's actually older than my medium large classic flap which is insane because it's held up so well like almost just as well as my medium large classic flap and I use this quite regularly as a casual bag so yeah this is really really nice and I love it. So that's all my Louis Vuitton and Chanel handbags. I absolutely love Louis Vuitton and Chanel as I'm sure you can tell already from my channel. My other handbags are from all different fashion houses so I'll go through them in no particular order. So the next bag I have is the Prada Safiano leather double zip tote. So it's got the two zips there, the handles and also it comes with the long shoulder crossbody strap so it's just this strap here this was actually my holy grail bag since i was in high school i decided to purchase this when i got my first full-time job professional job and i wanted to use it for work but unfortunately i didn't really use it that much just because the workplace i was in the environment the people i worked with aren't into designer bags or anything like that so i didn't really feel comfortable using a designer bag. I did use it like when I went out to the shops or grabbed lunch with friends, but it just felt a bit awkward because it is, it looks like such a work bag, like a briefcase. And don't get me wrong, I absolutely love this bag. And this was actually all the rage back in the day, all over YouTube, everyone had this bag. It was either the black one or like that pink nude shade. I think it was like the cameo color. But yeah, everyone had this bag and you can fit so much. You could actually fit a laptop in there, documents. So this is actually a really good work bag, but for my environment and where I work, it's just not really suitable. So I haven't reached for it and that's why it's still in like perfect condition. This was actually a bag I was considering selling too, but Prada on the resale market just doesn't sell for that much. So I think I'll just keep it in my collection. I was so proud of myself when I finally got this bag. It was just a huge achievement for me. So it's got a bit of sentimental value. So the next bag I have is from Givenchy and it's the Antigona in the black box leather. So it's like that smooth, shiny leather. And I purchased this back in 2017 as a travel bag. It's actually held up really well. Like there's no scratches at all. I was actually concerned because of how smooth and shiny it is. I thought it would get pretty scuffed up easily, but it's held up amazingly well. And it actually fits a small water bottle. This is the mini size, so it comes with the long leather strap, so I'd use it as a crossbody. And sometimes you can just take it off and just use it as a handheld. So I think this is a nice work bag too, and a nice casual bag. And I really like the giant zipper on it. It's just really smooth. I know it had its time back in the day when everyone had it. It was all over social media, but I still think it's a classic piece. and. I love the shape and it's just really, really practical too. So yeah, that's my Givenchy Antigona in the mini size. Speaking of bags that have had their time, the next bag I have is from Chloe and it's the Chloe Nile bag. So it's also known as like the bracelet bag. It's just got this iconic circular handle. So you can just hold it like that or you can let it drop like that. And it does have it does come with a long crossbody strap. So this is in the color Moddy Gray. So this is the iconic color of the Chloe Nile. And this is actually a purchase I made at the start of this year, I think. So fairly recently, I know that this was, this is such an outdated bag. People don't even know the bag anymore. It was just all over social media as well. But when it was first, announced and all over social media I didn't really care too much for it I just thought it was kind of like a trendy bag and it'll die and it kind of died but it was still floating around everywhere and it still is a little bit but I just can't like lately I just couldn't get it out of my mind I just think it's such a understated bag that if you don't know handbags or luxury handbags you won't know what brand it's from the only Chloe logo is just at the bottom and that's embossed so you can hardly see that but I just think it's such a classic elegant piece so it's just like a piece of jewelry you just put it around your wrist like that and put it in the crook of your arm and yeah I think it's just such a pretty bag and I just use this when I don't want to be 
seen in such a flashy like Louis Vuitton bag or a Chanel bag, I just like to reach for this bag. It's very under understated and that's what I love about it. And this is the small size. I think it comes in a larger size and also a mini size. So it's kind of like a half moon shape. And the larger one's quite significantly larger. And I just think the proportion of the handle to the larger bag just doesn't really look right. So I think this is the perfect in between. So yeah, that's my Chloe Nile bag in Modi Grey. The very last handbag in my collection is from Longchamp. So it's the Le Pliage Neo, I think. I'll leave it in the description box below. But it's the one that's all black, the nylon material with the all black leather straps. And this is actually what I use for work. So I think this is a very low key, understated handbag. So it's very simple, nothing to it. This has got a bit of leather there on the straps and just this flap there. So all it is, it's just like a giant bottomless pit. And I have used this to death. Like it's, I've had this for so many years and it's all like starting to get wrinkly and holes and the corners are starting to rip apart. But I think considering how long I've had it and how much I use it like daily, I think it's held up super well. This can also hold a 13 inch laptop, documents in there. I can put my water bottle, everything fits inside perfectly. So yeah, I absolutely love this bag. And eventually when this starts to break apart and fall apart, I will be purchasing another one. So this is actually very similar in style to the Louis Vuitton Neverfull in that it's just like a tote, except this one has a zipper closure. So it's a bit more secure. This is just an open, top like that but for work I think I, I feel much more comfortable with carrying this one rather than the Louis Vuitton one. I also love using this for travel just because it is made out of nylon. It's so lightweight you can stuff it to the brim and it'll be fine to just carry around and if you don't want to use it you can just easily fold it up and put it in your suitcase so I always use this for traveling as my carry-on too. This is the large size. I believe it also comes in a smaller one, but I've got the large one. So yeah, that's my very last handbag in my collection. So that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and staying till the end. I really hope you enjoyed it. As I said earlier, if there's a particular bag you wanted a closer look at and a review on, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll be happy to do one. But for now, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.